Let's suppose you've scouted a great spot for making a photograph and you want to save it for another time. Or you found a killer subject to shoot, like a specific building or a mountain or a lighthouse, and you don't want to waste time searching for it at a later date. Well, this is where markers come in. You can identify a specific camera location or a foreground subject using a marker. You can label it and save this information for later. Hi everyone, this is Mike Shaw with Planet for Photographers, and this video tutorial will show you how to create, edit, and save markers for camera and scene locations. We're going to use New York City again in this example, and we'll go back to the walkway on the Hudson River in New Jersey, where we can get a great view of the One World Trade Center building. So here's how to add a marker. Just like adding a camera location pin, first you center the little circle on the map at your marker location like this, and then you simply tap the plus button and you choose add a marker. You'll get this pop-up window with lots of options. Now in particular, notice this set of icons that allow you to set the characteristics of your marker. In this case, we're going to choose travel, since that pretty well describes our situation. Now in turn, tapping on this choice leads to another set of pop-up windows with a whole set of options. We're going to choose the first one, denoted by a pair of binoculars, which is labeled Overlook with a Scenic View. Pretty descriptive, wouldn't you agree? Now, there's one special point. Notice the row of uh, input boxes, height, width, and camera height above the ground. Now, in this case, we're going to leave the first two alone, since they don't really apply. But the last one gives us an interesting option. Namely, if our marker uh, location actually applies to a physical structure or building uh, above the ground, then you can enter this information here. For example, let's imagine you're three stories up at, say, 36 feet above the ground in a, out of a 10-story building. Well, you can enter that information here just like this. You can just type in 36 feet. So just be sure to understand that this height is for the actual marker location, which is not necessarily the same as the structure height, of course, unless you're on the roof. Now, once you're done, you just tap the check mark up here to temporarily save this information and return to the map. So now, let's suppose we want to add a second marker. Again, we can long press on the map just like before. But notice the four buttons that appear below. These correspond whether we want to set the camera or scene location, as we do here, or a basic marker. So we'll choose the third button here, and this is just for the basic marker, and that brings up the same pop-up windows as before. And again, we'll choose travel, uh, tap the check mark, and we're done. We've added two markers. Now, once we have our two markers, it's easy to assign one of them to be the camera location. All we do is we simply tap on it and then select the camera icon. Same goes for the scene location. We can simply tap on that marker and select a scene location. Now, by the way, if we decide to relocate either the camera or the scene location by long pressing and dragging it, notice how it snaps into place as we approach a new marker just like this. Now, this feature makes it especially easy to quickly compare the effects of switching camera or scene locations between different markers, as you'll see a little bit later. And what's especially useful is you don't have to be zoomed in for this to work, and this is a super helpful technique when you're zoomed out like this. Now, let's go back to the One World Trade Center building and we'll place a marker on it. Again, we'll do a search for One World Trade Center building, and by tapping on the magnifying glass, here it is, and boom, there we've got it. Now, to precisely place the marker, we can zoom in like this, and we can switch to normal map mode, like this, tapping here, and again, we can center the building in the middle of the screen, under the little circle, and then tap on the plus button. And then we select the add marker. Now, in the pop-up window here, we're going to select Building instead of Travel, because it's really a skyscraper. And this time, we're going to enter the total height of the structure. Uh, in this case, it's 1,792 feet. Just happen to know that, which includes the antenna. And for the width now, what we're going to do is we're just going to enter 5 feet for the moment. You'll see why in, in just a second why we're choosing to do this. And the height above the ground is zero, because it's on the ground. So we select OK with the check mark, and boom, we're done. Now we're back in map mode, and we can now tap on the screen location button to make the building our scene location. 
Now, if you haven't seen this next feature that I'm about to show you, hang on to your seat, because this is one of the key things of Planner for Photographers. It's so terrific. So first, tap on this little viewfinder button down right here. This is going to bring up a whole bunch of options we'll talk about in detail in a later tutorial. But for now, tap on the viewfinder icon like this, and bam, you're looking at a virtual view of the photograph you'd get from that camera location with a 50 millimeter focal length lens right across the Hudson River. Amazing, right? So we're going to look much more detail about this capability later on, but this is one of the key things that allows you to trade off different focal lengths, all kinds of things that we'll get into. So for now, let's go back to the map, tap on the same marker, and this time we're going to add a second marker. In fact, you can add as many markers as you want to the same spot. So again, when we do this, we're going to select building in the pop-up window. And this time, we're going to select a height of only 1356 feet, uh, which is the actual height of the building without the antenna, and a width of 200 feet. And a height above the ground is still zero. I'm going to tap OK, and we're back in the map mode. And now when we zoom in, look, we can see a blue circle, which corresponds to the 200 foot wide dimension of the building. And it matches up pretty well with the street block width, which shows that we're, we're pretty much on target. And now look what happens when we go back to the virtual viewfinder. You can start to see a more representative block outline of the building, along with the antenna sticking out of the top. And this is a type of thing that's just so helpful in doing your planning and lining up uh, different buildings with different um, objects in the, in the sky. So finally, now although it's not actually the case here, let's see how we can add what we call a floating marker. Now a floating marker can be either a solid object, like a disc dish at the top of a TV tower, or a hollow object, like the open window in a rock arch. Now to add a new uh, floating marker, again we simply enter the, we, we tap on the, on the map where we want it to be, in this case right on top of the, uh, the building, and now we enter the width and the height, let's just say 50 feet by 50 feet, and this time we're going to give it a height above the ground. Uh, in this case we're going to put it right at the top of the antenna, so we'll say 1,792 feet. Now notice that the 50 foot height begins at uh, 1,792 feet for a total height of 1,842 feet. So now we have two markers and uh, a camera and a scene location. Now be sure to note that the information isn't saved anywhere just yet. In fact, if we were to open up a different plan, for example, uh, like from here, the current markers and the camera and the scene locations would just disappear. So here, if we just wanted to keep the markers, we simply um, we want to create what's called a marker file. And we do this by first zooming out so that all the markers are visible. And then we tap up here, brings up this menu, and then we select Markers, and then Save. We type in a name, let's say for example New York, like this, N-E-W-Y-O-R-K, and then we hit Save. And if we wanted to check, we can reset everything by tapping the plus uh, button, then the new file icon like before, hit Save, No, uh, everything gets reset. And now, when we go up to plans, like this, we can tap on New York, tap on it, and everything is back. Good, okay. So finally, to get a list of all the markers and their GPS coordinates, we tap the plus button, and then list markers. And you can see them all listed here, uh, just in case that would be of help, uh, help to you. So that's it. That's how to add and edit and use markers and marker files in Planet for Photographers. And so until next time, this is Mike Shaw saying, good luck with your planning.